to you about about primal quest and and i'd like just uh thank you all for for being here and 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 this weird uh pixel adventure rpg kind of space that's that's kind of cool thank you for being here and we'll be right back Has already been listening. Uh, it's worth saying it again. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's 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 my philosophy of stuff. So yeah, it's it's it has been done, and and but we can do it slightly different, or maybe see this from a different angle, and and yes, still cool, right? Yeah, definitely. Got to do my take on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, more people are showing up more than I expected, so mm. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, hopefully, we should should we get up there and just be like, yeah, or wait for Tony. Yeah. I will, I will go there and just message a friend. Uh, if I get my. Oh, here. Hey, hey, everyone. Uh, I'm just waiting for, for Tony from Plus One XP uh, that will be re 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 recording this panel and we can start. I think everyone that's supposed to be here is here. 
and we're just waiting for for Tony and I'll, I will be messaging him uh, so we can get things going. Sorry for just uh, making wait for for like five minutes or or something. Okay. Uh, I think they're wrapping it up. I see them. I got the Twitch stream pulled up, and ever. Oh, ah, okay. They're they're on the stage, and some other cat in Jason Hall, and they're all doing some little dancing emoji thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. So. Yeah. It, I've got to mute it, but if I had to guess, that's their thank you, everyone. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if I should message him or not, but I will just wait for for a few minutes. I I'd, I'd say it's worth doing. Oh yeah. I, I can do it if you don't want to. I, I, no, I'm, no, no. I'm doing. Okay, sorry. Oh. Uh, let's see. I think I, I sent the message to, to, to Tony. Okay. At least through, through this platform. You know. <laughs> I should probably copy and paste this on, on some messenger thing. Or no. I don't know. I don't want to Interrupt. All right, I unmuted his stream. It seems like he's there actually still kind of going. There's talk of <laughs> them doing stuff with a donut okay. maker or a fax machine and whipping things with their you know electric cords <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah well if we're maybe i don't know yeah i'll, I'll just start in i guess i guess so um, that's it uh hey everyone uh we're gonna start this then and so if uh Tortellone, Peter, and Stefan want to go there on the on the little stage for if for when to for we do this properly. So uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for for being here uh, to hear us talk about Primal Quest. Uh, and my I am Joe Nogueira, and I'm the creator of Primal Quest, and 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 uh, old school publishing and i'm here to celebrate the release of promo quest in print with exalted funeral I talk about uh what we are working on uh, for for the future what we've been working on for now with of, with these collaborators i've been working on and what we have planned for the future of promo quest uh with exalted funeral and other publishers and third party publishers and I'm going to start uh, by asking uh, 
my friends here to, to present them. And I'm going to start with uh, Gustavo Tortelloni, who is, who is there. And he's working on a series of uh, adventures uh, for Promo Quest. And I will let him uh, and talk about him. We are collaborating and exchanging ideas uh, to do some, some weird and strange and horrific things with Primal Quest. And I'll, I'll let him talk about it. All right. So my name is Gustavo. I am also from Brazil. Uh, and <clears throat> I, I really like this idea, this concept of uh, stone and sorcery. And... I'm very thankful for Jogo calling me to create for his uh, brand new game. Um, well, right now, we are working on uh, making some adventures for it. So the first one of a trilogy of adventures is, is mostly finished. We have to figure it out something about mapping and stuff like that. Like, but the concept is it drinks in the stone and sorcery, but it's almost at the beginning of when humans started uh, growing their own food. So it's like in the, in the line that separates these two different eras. Yeah, I think that's it. You're muted, man. Diogo, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, sorry. And we're we're going to do this this pretty cool thing that uh, for the mapping that uh, Gustavo was talking about. We're going to have like a, a hex map and we, we're going to have some tables and some dice we can roll on the map and to generate encounters and things you can interact with the map. So every time you play the, the adventure, it will be slightly different. And so you can have different experiences as, as a referee running the game and, and even as a player uh, playing it with different referees and in different times, so um, I'm pretty excited. And Gustavo has always has had uh, some wild ideas. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure if you're familiar with with his work, uh, you will be excited to see. And if you're not, I'm happy. I will be certainly happy to present you with uh, one of my favorite creators. And I'm hoping to for you to to take a look of the rest of uh, the other. Other other works that he has and, and amazing stuff that he do. Thanks, so. man. Thanks. Uh, okay, so let's now go to to Stefan Soret to talk about uh, the work he has, he has done for Primal Quest and on the Primal Jam, and then if he has any plans for the future and what what his plans uh, for Primal Quest are. And and he's a, a third party publisher. And, and yeah, he's here to talk about his work and on that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I saw Diego honestly just posting about it on on Twitter, uh, Primal Quest, and the the tagline Stone and Sorcery really spoke to me. Um, I I think I don't know when he started working on it, but I had certainly watched Primal, the Gandhi Tartakovsky show, and had not found anything out there like it with the feel that 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 show kind of gave um there's probably something but that i'm just not aware of but uh so i love primal quest read through it and i uh wrote a couple just pamphlet adventures one called witches don't die and another called the demon beneath the depths and they're they're on ef uh i have plans for some more uh, but they're just both really quick low prep adventures that you know one night um of gaming probably and unless you're doing a lot of improv to stretch it out because since they're pamphlet adventures of course you know there's a lot of room in the middle for you to fill in uh the the ones i have planned for the future hopefully i've got outlines for three or, or four more pamphlets um that i might do uh depending on how how well those actually turn out when it gets into more writing beyond just putting ideas into bullet point formats and organizing them yeah and, and i i invited stefan too because uh uh we are both have interest with the dcc community we have ties with the dcc community and we have uh worked to get before 
uh, doing stuff for that. And, and, and during the, the pandemic, uh, we were on, on a zine too uh, with that, right? Yeah. Yeah, you did. And... Diogo did a, a ton of art for um, a, a Weird Frontiers adventure, which Weird Frontiers is like Dungeon Crawl Classics, but Weird Western. And he did, a, I got him to do a whole lot of art for one. It's called the, the Brimstone Cradle. And and it was I was super excited when and and he was interested in, in making stuff for Primal Quest, and we exchanged some ideas and and I helped with him a little bit with, with layouts and 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 how to to make a template for 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 the platforms and 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 I was really trying to do these these things to to promote the game and, and get more people to produce and and, and that's how I I started making gaming content with with gaming stuff was with dcc and 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 stefan and i have this link together so i wanted to to to, to make it as comfortable and as easy as it was for me to start with dcc and maybe even more like making uh uh royalty free artwork and and stuff like that so yeah yeah i had the pamphlet adventures i wrote they were totally done in google docs they were you know, you play them. They were very gameable, but they weren't pretty. Diogo went and made them look really nice. And, and then he gave me the affinity file. And that's what I'm going to be using for other pamphlets. I've, I actually already have. I, I did a couple of Mutant Call Classics pamphlet adventures. And I, so I've used it already. Yeah. And, and the cool thing about Primal Quest is too, uh, it's really easy to make stuff for it. Like you don't have uh, to prep uh, a lot of hours to make an adventure. You can, with a quick random tables and a few ideas you can scribe something to play for a few hours uh with very little prep and very little needs to to prepare with math or balance or check any any kind of these tables or ruling books to, to check the math you know so uh that's 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 a fun thing and and, and stefan does it really well with the quick and, and easy to run uh pamphlet adventures that ideal for like a convention play one shot or maybe like a side quest on, on your campaign and and i have here too uh if uh, sorry stefan do you want to say anything else like you know add anything and no, all good move on to peter I, yeah and i'm i'm here with peter rooting to uh, uh the the person behind uh parts per million uh publishing which does a lot of, of solo RPG stuff and then solo adventures and solo tools. And I've been following his work for a while and he has has made something for, for one of my games before, like Dark Streets. And, and I was really excited for that. And, and, and uh, I bugged him for a while to make that available in print because I really wanted it in print. And, and I made that happen and I proposed it to him to work on something together for promo quest and we have like a, a a draft that is ready and 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 we are sending it to the editor to make a, a solo and gmless supplement for promo quest uh with uh minimalist tools all in line with the game and some tables and, and we're preparing more tools for you to to enjoy the game alone or even without a gm and then I, I will let Peter talk a little bit more about his work and, and what he has done with, with Primal Quest. Peter? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm Peter. Um, I've, I mainly do uh, solo uh, tools, uh, so you can play kind of... Um, my idea is to be able to play any game without a game master. And, uh, yeah, I sort of i got into this uh well i got, got into it years ago when i was a game reviewer rpg reviewer and i couldn't uh you i couldn't ask my group to pick up a completely new game every single week so um you know that simply wasn't going to happen i didn't want to review games based on just reading the rules i wanted to be able to play it so that's how i kind of discovered solo play um, and I was doing that mainly for myself until the pandemic hit. Um, well, actually, just before the pandemic, I started publishing a few things. Then during the pandemic, of course, it really, really took off. 
and that's when I did solo rules for um, Dark Streets and Darker Secrets and um, Solar Blades and Cosmic Spells. And kind of, that's you know, you know, how we made contact. And so I've written the rules for um, uh, Primal Quest. And what really got me about Primal Quest was it, it kind of reminded me of being a kid again, where you, you, know, you come making, a, you know, playing make believe, and you'd have, say, some toy soldiers, and then you'd have your toy uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and it'll come and you know, eat some soldiers, and then you'd have a spaceship, and you could throw that in as well. And as a kid, all of this makes complete sense. But there's very few um, you know, sort of RPGs out there where you can mix your dinosaurs and you know your spaceships and you know great old ones and all this sort of stuff. You, you know, mixing all of that on the same table is it, it is underserved, should we say? Um, but yeah, Primal Quest does that, and it's and I love Rules Light um, most solo role players favor rules light games because you can hold all those rules in your head and you're not going into the book to, you know, to check rules and um you, or you're not doing something and discover you've done it wrong um you know, so if you can play from your sort of short-term memory uh you know, it, that really helps solo play because uh, you're juggling everything else as well and one of my kind of hallmarks is is I always try and take the core mechanics from the game I'm working on and use that for the solo rules. So once you're kind of in that primal headspace, you can work the solo rules. You know, if you can do a skill cha uh, challenge or test, then you can do the solo rules. You don't really need any. You, know, you have to remember uh, you know, particular tools or rules or subsystems. Um, so yeah that that's kind of what i do and uh yeah i love primal crest it, it's just it's kind of crazy um but yeah funny enough i also do those pamphlet adventures i haven't done any for primal quest yet i the last one i released was for um solar blades and uh cosmic spells that was a little pamphlet adventure i released um last month i think it was but i haven't done any for primal quest yet but they'll they'll be coming yeah, and, and Peter does really, really cool, cool stuff, and and I was excited to to have him on board to to work on Primal Quest and and to to exchange ideas with him and and to like uh, write uh, right by side with him. Like uh, he wrote really the, the 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 core chassis of of the the Soul Engine uh, on Primal Quest, and I I, I just. Uh, like filling the borders with some some minimal stuff that I, that I got from from stuff that I read from him and and, and some some stuff that suggested for for other people because uh, solo play is still something that that I'm I'm very very beginner uh, very much a learner still uh, but uh, I'm very a learner still in everything else but yeah I'm getting ahead of myself here so yeah uh, so we have. Uh, Pharaoh with with Peter Rudin is uh, a set of solo and GMless uh, tools we we co-written for Promo Quest that it's going to editing and Tortoleone is writing uh, this trilogy of adventures. Uh, Stefan uh, has published uh, those pamphlet adventures and uh, there's a lot of more stuff for Promo Quest that we made on the Promo Jam on each last last month so if you search on each you can find this stuff i i've been talking to to other creators too uh for partnerships and, and collaborations for promo quest uh one of them is is even uh uh sitting right there uh in the audience i i've talked about uh, gp and and we've been uh Hoover talking about maybe doing something in the future, and and and, and if he if he wants, I, I'm not gonna put any anyone on the spot here, but I'm I've been I've been talking with other other people about uh, making stuff for Primal Quest, and I'm excited to talk about a project that uh, I have with uh, Howard from the Tales from the Magician School. Uh, he's an editor from uh, this this magazine that uh 
publishes uh, weird fiction like in uh, like was in the weird, weird tales and and pop Richard of of before uh, in Goodman Games, and I I have approached uh, uh, him and 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 we are starting to talk about making uh, a magazine called Primal Tales. Uh, it's not uh, confirmed yet, but we're like talking with other creators and artists and, 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 and comic artists to make a magazine showcasing literature, art and comics and, and, and articles about music and, and adapting all of this for, for Primal Quest. Uh, and, and we have other projects too, uh, expanding the game. We have... Uh, the promo world of Taya Zin uh, that will adapt uh, not only the setting for old school essentials, but uh, bringing new adventures and some information about the setting. And and I don't know. Uh, I thought it was lasting. This was gonna last much longer than than I thought uh, this lasted. But I, I, I do have a question, though. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I was would, gonna I open like... to questions and then suggestions or anything i would like to know i would like to know where where you get inspiration to create the game i don't think we ever talked about this before uh well i i talk a lot about a book uh called still like an artist uh by austin clean that's kind of my my creative bible and i i almost follow it to the letter and so I, I still from from literally uh, li literally everywhere. I mean, I I, I I watch stuff and don't see ah is this good or bad. And see what what can I steal from this and and what is what what I see there's a lot of bad stuff. But what 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 good thing I can I can take from this and do totally. something good with this. But for Primal Quest, but obviously I have some some. Some stuff that is really influential on on the stuff that I make, I they, that I think it's pretty obvious, but uh, I can talk about it anyway if if uh, someone wonders about it. But it's like '80s cartoons, like uh, Thunder the Barbarian and 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 Herculoids and Masters of the Universe and and and, and even their their new versions. Uh, I have not, nothing against the new interpretations. Like I love the new Shirha. I love the the. I haven't seen the new He-Man entirely, but I love the new interpretations. I, I like the new Thundercat that people hated. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I don't have uh, many sacred cows. Like I love Star Wars to death. So if people know because this, like Solar Blades and Cosmic Spells, is basically uh star wars uh on acid or something like that <laughs> you know yeah yeah very punk very punk game i like it yeah and but i love it i love everything from star wars like i know the last trilogy was wasn't all everything that could have been and there's a lot of stuff there but it's for me it's still star wars you know it's still totally something that harkens to 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 my fantasy to to my childhood to to this make believe and i know that today it's like consumerism and just buy more toys and 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 and, and disney is evil and oh but i guess but it's i guess if you, Star Wars for if, me you di if you dig a little bit if you dig under the, the surface you can find good stuff in this new trilogy for example yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. You take what, what you like and you yeah. leave the rest behind yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. take what exactly. inspires yeah. you and and twist it in your own way <clears throat> yes that that's what i'm saying like pop culture for me it's like a, a really big influence on my work but i try to cut to the crap of it i try to look to, to the bullshit in it especially being uh from some from latin america uh Tortoloni, uh knows what i'm talking about and yeah and, totally and so this political stuff has uh, a say in my work too and 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 sometimes this is welcomed sometimes this is not but it's just 
something that I have to deal with on a daily I guess, basis. So yeah, I guess it's part of being an artist at the end of it, you know. It's like can't be apolitical. Yeah, uh, like completely, completely. It's like I don't think it's possible. And 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 there's a really real uh, yeah, and we can feel the impact daily on the, on on our lives. So it's it's not something that uh, yeah I feel comfortable being silent about. So yeah, totally, totally. But uh, yeah, like, but be, be, beyond that, like I, I I love pop culture. So uh, 80s cartoons, like TV series. So obviously, obviously, Primal was a, a really big influence for for Primal Quest and Sword and Sorcerer literature. Uh, Robert E. Howard, Fritz Leiber. I know the problematic uh, aspects of of folk literature and authors of that age, but uh, I try to look beyond that and and and, and presenting a Sword and Sorcery world that 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 can. Can be something else that can be exciting and and and, and weird and different, but uh, weirdly it can be inclusive as it should be on our world because uh, why not? And like uh, it doesn't need to be like every frog frog king every frog person adores the, the demon uh, frog god, you know, and this totally. kind of stuff. You know, so I, I feel like I feel like this is the, like using this as an inspiration is like the possibility of correcting yeah. stuff from that time and updating it to nowadays. You yeah. know, you you can still uh, keep all the exciting and weird stuff about it, like the the, exactly. the ancient gods and and the, and the sacrifices and stuff. But you 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 don't have to to be an asshole. You know, exactly. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the point. Yeah. I was like, Diogo mentions in my original thing for the the demon beneath the depths, which is about like some frog can kidnap uh, when when the pekik uh, the the little the monkey people, yeah yeah kidnap a kid. They're gonna sacrifice some. I accidentally implied a thing of like, oh, they're all like this, and Diogo said, hey, make you know make that little change. So I made it very clear in that no, it's this one group of the yeah, frog it's people. gonna be like I didn't. Want, I, it's me. not a an evil, you know, a whole race of evil frog people. No, no. Yeah, and there's it, nothing wrong with like ah, this tribe has this worship, this this entity that's mm -hmm. that's evil. So and they different tribes worship it in yeah. different ways. Yes, yes. Some people worship Death Bezos, so that's. <laughs> that's the pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> What's funny was you you listed all of those kind of inspirations for it, all those cartoons and things. When I was playing Primal Quest, I saw it almost in black and white. It was more like a Charlton Heston uh, movie, and the you know the stop motion animation from Jason and the oh, Argonauts. Yeah. That's what was going on in my head when I was playing it. Yeah, um, I mean, because I, I you know. I didn't grow up with those cartoons and yeah. um, I don't watch TV. So I, I, you know, anything that's on Netflix just goes completely past me because I have no idea about it. But yeah. Um, yeah, for me, it was all in black and white and it was, um, it was all stop motion, yeah. you know, these kind of uh, little wireframe dinosaurs and things. That's what was going on in my head when I was playing it. That's fantastic to hear. Yeah. But, uh, but I mean, dinosaur <laughs> has always been a, a big thing for me. Like here in Brazil, we had this this chocolate bar called called Surpresa, which is basically oh yeah surprise. oh boy yeah 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 <laughs> yeah that they had uh, the chocolate bar was in the shape of a dinosaur and there there were different dinosaurs so you could have like you could collect chocolate bars and each chocolate bar would come with a card with the 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 picture of a dinosaur with dinosaur stats in the back so you could collect those Crazy. but yeah yeah it, it was pretty cool and i was always obsessed with, with dinosaurs and i collect those magazines in the in the in the news in the newsstand that would come with with dinosaur stuff and then and, and try to to connect those issues that had the dinosaur bones to to make your little t-rex skeleton <laughs> i think that's i think that's that was the thing that actually caught me to to work with you on primal quest uh, when I was younger, I almost became a paleontologist. So, like, 
dinosaurs are like like this huge thing for me as well. Really like them. I'll say I I noticed in our in the chat Eric uh, Steiner had a question. He said it sounds like the new adventures. I'm guessing you're um, talking oh, about yeah. you, Gustavo conflicts or or may feature conflicts or encounters between nomadic tribes and early agrarian civilization. Was that a conscious decision to explore the tension in an evolving game world? Or just an organic or accidental part of advancing the game design. I think it was completely accidental, but but yes. it, I think it's it seems we're exploring and and, and uh, I have an idea for an adventure uh, like like a mythology about how uh, humans uh, begin to to learn how to write. Uh, and that, that that's kind of stuff we're, we're like, kind of like exploring. I think uh, Tortoloni and I talk a lot about this 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 weird existential stuff sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, so I don't know, man. For like the the original plan was to to work on a single adventure, um, and it was. The first adventure of the trilogy that actually later became a trilogy. Um, it's more <laughs> psychedelic than anything else. Um, it's it's a, a quest for something uh, that people need in order to resolve the problems of the tribe. But then I was like, oh, maybe this, this uh, enemy from the adventure could be uh used once again and then two extra adventures came to my mind in order to to make this trilogy and so the the whole concept now is to explore different parts of this uh period of time in humanity like with the very three very specific uh concepts like the first adventure is something more psychedelic that uh, is related to the, the the shaman of a tribe. The second one uh, would be more related to this um, agricultural way of life and surviving, like like the clash between people growing food and people who are actually uh, picking food from nature and how would they uh, deal with each other. And the third one would explore like um, the the concepts of elder gods and and these so-called entities that have been with humanity for a long time at least at the the arts and the culture as we can say so three different aspects in a in a trilogy of adventures yep oh oh very exciting and and well uh so uh the idea is now opening for for questions if one want uh want to ask anything or you can either Type there or, or come to this little stand where where, where I am and, and and voice your your concerns uh, against the the evil cult of Primal Quest. <laughs> While we're waiting for question, I'll say it sounds like you've got some really high concept adventures in mind. I'll say mine, my writing style, how I I wrote for these is me kind of the uh, witches don't die that one. It was me going, huh, well, you know, there, it's very, we've got animals, we've got the dinosaurs, but we also have like a lot of like very primal spirits and stuff. And I kind of thought about, um, I had just rewatched Princess Manonoke. Okay? And I was Oof. thinking about the boar tribes and, and you know, then they have these demons in them. And so the, the start of that one is the spirit of the, uh, the this boar tribe ate a witch because they wanted her witch powers as, a, you know, summarizing it pretty quickly but her spirit her ghost got into one of them and the you know all the player characters they're approached by this possessed boar who barely has control over this boar and you know requests help the boars they're doing this because of the chaos beasts so they're like in princess manon okay you know they're pushed to doing evil things because of outside forces but you know they're using really cruel methods but they they have a point they're trying to solve something for themselves that is a real problem and a real problem for more than them and another one i'm working on now is is basically just me going 
uh, rewatching Samurai Jack with my kid and going, man, that'd be a good episode uh, to kind of do a little twist on, but it wouldn't, I'd have to twist it a lot. Hey, what if I combine it with this old episode of Star Trek that I like? Hey, that's pretty good. And then <laughs> yeah. it's just organizing a lot of bullet points until, and staring at my Google Doc until I can combine those in a way that actually feels like it fits. Um, uh, hey, we got a, another question. Yeah. Uh, JP is asking uh, if you can talk a little about the cave painting system at the end of the game. What inspired that mechanic and maybe how that works uh, in the solo rules? Oh, yeah. Uh, I haven't thought about how that works in the solo rules, but but it would work pretty much the same the same way uh if you if you assume uh your tribe is is the 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 primal tribe primal quest community on the internet so you would make the painting and share it online and it would work pretty much the same way but uh what jp is talking about if if uh, i don't know if everyone is familiar with that or not it's at the end of, of uh the cave of our people uh which is the introduction adventure for primal quest uh an activity is proposed for uh the players uh, and, and even the gm to take part in a in a group activity uh that the, the characters itself would be performing in the game would be making a cave painting in the in the in the ancestral cave of their tribe depicting the experience they had in their uh uh spiritual vision they they had in the adventure which is like a rite of passage in a in a, in a cavern way where they imbibed uh a tea uh with psychedelics and have this this trip and the future of the the future and the past of their tribe are revealed to them and they they can forge their path and see uh some insights of what, what's in going in the, in the adventure uh, that has a lot of do with the inspirations I have of, of the game. Uh, so, and then the adventure ends, and they can they can make this painting as as a group to depict the uh, how how the adventure well uh, went, uh, what were their their favorite moments, or maybe what uh, was most impactful to them, and everyone. That's that's like an experience point where everyone involved in that gets like an experience point uh, to develop their character and they share that this narrative with the tribe. And the idea too is for people to share these drawings at the end of all adventures they have. Like they, if they go to have adventures somewhere else and they go back to their tribe in the in the campaign, they can make a painting in the wall telling their tales and and gain an, another experience point. And the idea is for, for, for groups everywhere in the world to, to make these drawings, take a picture and, and share on, on social media or on our communities. And, and hopefully in the future, my idea is to have like a web page, uh, which would be like the, the, the cave wall where we would post images from, from people, from groups all over the world, like playing Primal Quest and having this shared narrative together. And where uh, where that idea came from uh i don't know from from like reading about uh uh prehistorical people uh i've i'm, I'm reading a book uh called 1499 uh because in theory uh brazil was discovered by the portuguese in the 1500s 1500 and this this book's about the history before uh, uh, the Portuguese arrive and, and talk about how uh, humans uh, settled uh, the Americas and, and 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 especially focusing on South America and and Brazil, especially you know so. And and that's some of the the, the ideas. And I, I saw that some themes and some 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 stuff that happens on caverns uh in brazil hap happens all, all around the world you know so that's something I, I wanted to feature in my game 
And, and since RPGs are, are this social thing, I wanted to have a, a, a mechanic in the game to reinforce that and, and, and make people do something together uh, at the end of the game, you know? So uh, I have more. Ah. Uh, oh, the you, you asked rules, something. Um, you can, if you wanted to put ideas. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, go ahead, Peter. Go ahead. Yeah. You're the oh, so I was just going to say something because yeah. the the, um, the the question was about the, this. Uh, how does that work with the solo rules? If you wanted to create a um, cave painting from the point of view of one of your NPCs, um, the solo rules have a mechanic where you can use a pack of cards, and there's a different kind of um, sort of broad idea or concept attached to each card in the deck. So what you can do, you know what the character, what the NPC's been through while they've been with you, but you can then draw a card um, and you know, take the suit and the face value of the card and use that to inspire that MP's um, uh, cave painting. So you would get different um, sort of cave paintings from each NPC if you try and you know, blend what the cards are telling you with what they've actually been through. Um, so that's how I would do it using the solo rules. Yeah, that's that's a very, very, very good point. I like, use it as oracles to generate stuff. And and uh, yeah. actually, I I I have been talking to our artists to do some 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 stuff inspired by you know those story cubes that I love. Uh, for solo play and for oracles in general, to to do some oracles with with cave paintings for Primal Quest and die drop tables. So you would roll dice on on this on this board with these cave paintings and get different results and 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 generate uh, elements for for you to 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 either prepare uh, your adventure or just play solo or world building in general. You know. So uh, we are open for any more, more questions or uh, Stephen, Peter, Tortoglione wanna say anything else? Well, I mean, we can talk about like the writing process. I imagine there's some people here who are just like, who, who would love to make their own stuff and uh, I don't know, maybe publish it in some way. Um, it, so how to write adventures, I, I kind of described mine a little bit. Uh, Gustavo, did, do you have anything you want to say just like about like the actual process, like where you start out and are you, I, I do a lot of bullet points and then those get combined and they turn into real sentences. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, I, I let, something that I <clears throat> like doing is um, like I, I like reading a lot about the, the theme first uh, so I can absorb like the top amount of information I can the best the, the the highest number and then I start like like writing random stuff related to the topic and I try matching it to see if it makes some kind of sense in order to create like the like the adventure itself this is how I this is how I, how I roll you know uh, but then I try to put all together into bullet points because this is the whole thing about the, the, the system, right? And, and at the end of it if, it, if it makes sense for an adventure, then, then I'm glad. And then I start writing it for real. But if I, if I don't, I, I normally toss it and start all over, you know. That's how, that's how I do it. Yeah. Uh, uh... I don't know. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't know if, if people are, uh, are here to want to hear us talk about that. But uh, so here we are <laughs> anyway. So for me to write adventures, for me, it's more about having this central idea and then figuring out a way to, to make it weird. Or maybe starting with, with a central simple idea 
and figuring out how to make it work in, in this setting and making it weirder and weirder until it becomes interesting, you know? For me, like uh, how I did with House of the Blood King, like, okay, it's a, a vampire in a mansion, but how, how do I make this, this into something, you know? And the process, how I work is that I, I, I try to get a simple thing, like, What's the essence of this and try to to build around it and and and, and corrupt it as much as to, to become something that becomes interesting and 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 i think there's the, my view of that's what is what is cool it's what is imperfect you know with stuff that that is uh this ordinary and standard uh is uninteresting, you know, so that's what I try to get the, the basics and, and disrupt the stuff. So well, I'll say um you might do this when I'm writing something. If I have something that's simple and I'm looking for stuff, I have a, a Google Doc that is just called unorganized because it is unorganized like bullet point thoughts. And if I need to like add something, if I'm feeling like it's too boring, I just look in there and it's everything I wrote down when I was like reading a book or watching Adventure Time or whatever, or or trying to write something else, but then an idea didn't work. So I cut it out, but I didn't just delete it. I yeah. paste it into this. So I, I use like I, I use one note on, on my cell phone. So I always I, I have tons and tons of notes about anything. I, I'm doing the dishes and I have an idea. So I have to clean my hands and just <laughs> note something I, yeah. down on my phone and then I I've done continue that. to do the dishes. So. Yeah, when I'm so, writing uh, an adventure, I, I like away. to think in, uh, I, I think in kind of timelines, and I, I kind of like to know where, how the villain got on the track they're on, and where they're going. And you know, I, I always want to be able to, if a player turns around and says, "Ah, oh, I want to find out this," and they find a really good way of finding, you know, past information, you know, like speak to dead or some kind of ritual to summon a ghost, they want to know what happened before i like the game master to have that information so i i kind of always start from the kind of the the past what happened and then bring it right up to the moment you start playing because you're playing to find out what happens but yeah. i also give the the villain their goal so the game master knows what happened up until now and what the game, the villain wants to happen, what their goal is, and you know, so that's kind of my continuum. So then you just you kind of it's like winding up toys and getting them all ready to kind of run around your desk. You've kind of, you set up all these things. You know where they're going, what all these threads are. But then when I actually start writing, I don't use the bullet points. I just have all this in my head, and then I kind of come in my little cabin here. And I just write it all. And it doesn't matter how long the adventure is, I will write it all in just one big sit, uh, setting, sitting. And then come back the following day and try and edit it into some kind of sense. But I write it longhand in, in one kind of manic writing session. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I, 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 I write a little bit by a little bit by a little bit, a little bit by a little bit. But yeah. Yeah, I'll. I no, like if I did writing, a little bit, a uh, little bit, a little bit, I would change my mind in the middle, and then it would be like two adventures that aren't connected. It has to be in one, <laughs> you know, written I, splurge. I used to write the same way, but then, like, if something broke my concentration, it was really difficult to like got back at the point I stopped. That's yeah. like the problem mm. I have writing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I read somewhere that some authors uh, finished. Like they're going to finish the work for today, they stop in the middle of a sentence, so they they know where they they can go afterwards when they they get back tomorrow. Say, so, oh, I was in the middle of this, because if you finish, oh, where was I anyway? So if you finish like in the middle, that helps. So I do that. <laughs> so yeah, I... does it work? Yeah, for me at least it does. I'll I'll. I can't do very long writing sessions a lot of the time. It might be like an hour or so, but um, I'll do that if I'm trying to write an adventure. But if I'm trying to write like a 
a table of things or, or a generator, you know, that is like one different idea, you know, in a list themed, you know, the list is always themed, but I can write that while I'm like, sometimes while I'm in, in between when my toddler is distracted and playing with his toys, I can get one out. And then I'll, <laughs> then he comes over to me, I need to play with him some more. And I, I play with him for yeah. a while, I think. And then when he's distracted sufficiently, I can get the next one out and write it really quick on my phone. So it, it depends what I'm writing, kind of yeah. how I write. Well, uh, any, any, you wanna, anyone want to add anything else to this? Or? I don't know. We, we could do another panel about adventure writing, and that would be exciting too. Mm -hmm. But uh... Getting started in publishing is incredibly easy. I, the, the bar to entry has never been lower. Yeah. If there is anyone that's um, you know, uh, thinking of it, there really is very little barrier to uh, yeah. getting going. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, I will be honest here. I'm a little anxious just because I, I know there's a lot, a lot of uh, well accomplished uh, peers um, listening to us right now when we're talking about beginning stuff. But uh, you know. And I'm really grateful for for uh, uh, each each and every one of you for being here. And and before we forget to and, and we go out uh, before saying anything, I want to uh, have time for each each and every one of you, uh, Gustavo, Peter, and Stefan, to uh, talk a little bit about your work, where they can find you, like um, if you want to send like social medias and or websites then can they can find uh, the stuff that you make uh before we forget to to do this so uh if you want to start uh Tortelione. all right um so i've been working with uh tabletops for like i don't know five years i started with this uh brazilian fanzine uh <laughs> written in the in the type typewriter and it was fun uh then i have this brazilian uh, line of zines called porrada e magia that which translated uh should be something like kick ass and wizardry uh yes. and, and but i also have like stuff published in english as well uh, i have uh what is it called i have the the river band which is a, a game i did with a uh uh, Brazilian friend of mine, Victor. Uh, it's about fishing. It's a tabletop RPG about fishing, inspired by Studio Ghibli's movies. And I also have a what else? A Kalunga Plateau, which is a setting for uh, old school essentials. You can find both of them on at Exalted Funeral. And yeah. and there and is Kalunga a, has dinosaurs too. So yeah, yeah. Go this, check that out. Dinosaur. Uh, dinosaurs. Dinosaurs yeah, approved it's <laughs> yeah this one is is somehow related to theosophy somehow yeah it's, it's quite cool and there is a there is a new one a new title coming up which is called arachnid stuff it's a zine about arachnids to use with old school essentials so 10 different types of giant tarantulas mostly psychedelic uh some random charts and a new character class and you can also find uh, stuff I make at my itch.io account, which is pitchblacklair.itch.io. Like, there's lots of stuff there: pamphlets, character classes, zines, adventures. You can find all of them there. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're gonna say. And it's it's posting links. So if you wanna post links to our stuff on the on the room chat, uh, all right. so people can find it easier, uh, more okay. easily. Uh, but yeah, uh, Tortelloni does awesome stuff, and I've been following uh, his work since the, the his early uh, zines here in Brazil uh, with typewriter, and, and it was uh, really really great uh, to see both our works growing together and now working together uh, and doing stuff with his altered funeral. It's pretty exciting. Thanks, thanks, man. Yeah, and. Uh, so, Peter, do you want to go ahead and, and talk about where people can find you and your stuff and your work? 
Yeah, okay. Um, so, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, my website is ppmgames.co.uk. Um, hang on. I'll... Now, I, is it, uh, I sell on um, sort of drive through on itch, Amazon. Um, I don't have anything yet on Exalted Funeral, but I'm working on it. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we will have two so, of the uh, yeah. promo quest stuff. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, cool. Someone's done it for me, right? Uh, yeah, I on drive through. That's where I started, sort of uh, five, six, six years ago. I think it is now. Uh, someone got me into that, and I think I've got about three hundred books on there now. I, I I kind of get rather manic when I write, and I I normally produce a, a book a week. Um, and then adventures on top. You know, I, I can release four things in a week. Um, you know, when I'm in full flow. So yeah, it's kind of I'm. I want to get everything everywhere. That's my um, yeah, kind of my ambition. Uh, I want to be in every store. Yeah, yeah. But, and 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 it, yeah. you're a very prolific author, and 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 have, have been supporting. Uh, Indie authors too, like doing tools for 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 uh, indie games. So that's that's very cool too, and and that's why I sought you to collaborate yeah, and doing stuff. So yeah, and I'm getting quite into YouTube now as well. I'm trying to build a little YouTube channel. Oh um, yeah, if if wanna kind of uh, we... post links to that too, uh, so people can can see the stuff uh, you make there. Uh, yeah, I can't remember what it is, but if, if they if they went to my <laughs> homepage, they it yeah, is yeah. there. Um, I do a kind of weekly um, diary video about just as the game designer, the stuff that I'm up to and you know, any problems I hit and what I'm trying next and that sort of thing. Um, you know, as well as, you know, kind of, you know, uh, solo stuff and product videos. But yeah, it, it's all there on, my, um, on the blog, which you've got the address for. Cool. And so, uh, and Stephen... Why don't you talk about uh, single read where people can find you and your your stuff? Yeah, uh, I'm on Twitter at DM Bad Wrong Fun. Um, I also I got my stuff on Drive Through and some on Exalted Funeral Itch. I posted Itch and my website in the chat. Dragon Peak Publishing. Um, I've you know I've done this for Primal Quest. I do other stuff for like Dungeon Crawl Classics. And if you look on Itch and Drive Through, I've got like a arranged by different genres, different packs of nearly 2,000 different VTT tokens. Um, and in probably about early September, Exalted Funeral will be carrying this new zine uh, for those on camera. Uh, Mysteries of the Multiverse. I just wrapped a Kickstarter for that. And it's uh, if, if you like post-apocalyptic stuff that is not dreary, uh, it's more throw it all in. Um, I mean, there's holographic pompadours that you can get that i stat it up um <laughs> you, you guys might like it but uh yeah hoping to write um some more uh primal quest pamphlet adventures and have those on exalted funeral too in the future so uh keep a lookout for that cool oh cool, thank you and and well i'm joe nogueira and i'm from old school publishing i i wrote primal quest and to be honest, I have many plans for Primal Quest, but I, I don't want to overwhelm everyone with like my my like daydreaming. But uh, honestly, I, I want Primal Quest to to develop as a line, and I have plans to keep it going for for years and and, and years, and like and, and plans for making box set sets and and, and inviting more people uh, to collaborate and other people from our uh, community of creators, other creators from 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 latin america and from all around the world and i don't know primal quest uh i take inspiration from from uh games like Morkborg and mothership that that have uh grown a healthy community and and doing great stuff so that's what i'm, I'm trying to emulate with primal quest and i'm just glad uh I have an opportunity to work with, with, with these people and, and, and opportunity to talk to, about my game with everyone here. And, and th thanks, everyone, for coming. And I think that's it, right? 
yeah i don't well i'll hang out for a little bit if yeah yeah folks want to do it around but i guess yeah sure go or don't we're not your boss yeah yeah, yeah. if everyone just want to hang around and, <laughs> and talk about stuff uh we'll be here I can just step off of this thing. Oh, okay.